guys. So today I'm going to briefly hit a topic um, that actually takes a little bit more than 15 minutes to get through correctly. So I have also written a blog post to go with this that has all the information on choosing a service dog breed. So Izzy just came in. Um, so I have a blog post that goes with this. That's the link in the description above so that you can get all the information on kind of how I think it's what I think is important to consider when you're choosing a breed for service work. And this is a question that we get a lot and I see a lot online. You know, what breed makes for a good um, diabetic alert dog or what breed makes for a good psychiatric service dog or, um, you know, can pit bulls be service dogs or can St. Bernard's be service dogs or, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I wanted to talk today about what breeds make good service dogs and why? And this is going to be the start of a whole series of information on choosing a service dog, evaluating a service dog, and then getting started with training. Because we pulled our group and everybody wanted to learn more about how to get started training a service dog. And so that's what we're moving into here in March. So I thought we'd start at the very beginning and we would start with how to choose a breed in general. So the first thing that I wanna say, especially for anybody who's watching this who already has a dog, is that it is true that you can find a good service dog candidate in any breed. I know breeds of all types that are, you know, dogs of all breeds that are successful service dogs, that are excellent diabetic alert dogs or psychiatric service dogs or, or anything like that. And so I don't want you to think, oh, she said German Shepherds don't make good service dogs and, and feel offended or something because I know lots of German Shepherds who are good service dogs. Oh, hi everybody. Yes, I see your comments coming through since I'm on my phone today. Um, so, so that's just what I, I kind of want to preface this with is that please know that I am not saying that your breed or the breed that you want is a bad service dog. I just want to give you the things that you should consider when you're choosing a breed. So, like I said, this is a much bigger topic than I can do in a 15 minute video. So I have also written a blog post so that there is all the information that I think you need to consider. So the first thing when you're choosing a service dog breed that you need to consider is, and I have notes, that's why I keep looking down, um, is what job you need the dog to do, right? So if you need a balance dog or you need a dog to pull a wheelchair, that's gonna require a much larger dog than any kind of alert work. So a diabetic alert dog can be 15 pounds and still do its job, right? Um, a balance dog needs to be quite a bit bigger for safety reasons and so that they can actually do the job. So that's something that you wanna consider when you're thinking about breed is size and how that relates to the job that you need the dog to do. Now, the other thing that you wanna think about when it comes to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> inhaled wrong there. <coughs> so the other thing you wanna think about is the personality of the dog and how that, <coughs> hold on just a second guys. Okay, I think I'm back now. <clears throat> so the other thing you wanna think about is how breed relates to what job you want done is the temperament of the dog. So for example, German Shepherds have a tendency to feed off their owner's anxiety and become anxious or aggressive themselves. Now again, I know German Shepherds who are very good psychiatric service dogs. But in general, German Shepherds tend to be hyper aware of their surroundings, they tend to be protective, you know, and they tend to feed off their owner's anxiety. And so that doesn't really lend itself to being a good service dog. Now, again, I know lots of great German Shepherd owners that have really great German Shepherd service dogs, but in general, they tend to feed off their owner's anxiety. So that's something that you want to think about. Um, and then the other thing to think about is if you're looking for any kind of scent work, you really want to go with a breed that has a good nose and uses it very naturally. So all dogs have excellent noses. They actually did a study um, <clears throat> with scent detection dogs where they compared German Shepherds, Pugs, and Greyhounds to see which ones had the best noses. And actually the Pugs outperformed the German Shepherds. Um, and they couldn't even motivate the greyhounds enough to get them to learn the task. So the greyhounds maybe had better noses, but they couldn't get them to do the assignment, and so they have no idea. So if you're looking for some kind of scent work, 
then a dog who has an excellent nose and uses it very naturally is going to be very helpful. So that's where we look into a lot of the sporting breeds. Um, so, you know, any kind of retriever or poodle or spaniel. Now, you know, having said that, I just placed a border collie as a diabetic alert dog and he's doing wonderful. But in general, right, looking to a sporting breed is going to be a little bit, is going to be a little more helpful. Um, and next week we're going to get into evaluating individual dogs. And that's where I'll kind of explain to you how to evaluate for these things. Um, but another example, you know, of using the nose naturally, this is what I mean by this. So um, Kenzie, our Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, she uses her nose very, very naturally. So without having to teach her anything, I can tell if Jessica has been in my backyard yet today by how Kenzie reacts when she hits the grass. So if Jess has walked through the backyard, Kenzie will get off the deck and she will immediately start to wiggle and then she will track Jess to wherever she has gone. So Kenzie uses her nose really naturally. I have four other dogs in the house who love Jess just as much as Kenzie does, but they don't do that. Okay, they only get excited once they see her. So that's another thing to think about if you're looking for any kind of scent task is a dog who uses their nose very, very naturally. So, you know, the first thing to think about is your task and what that will require out of your dog. Now, the next thing to think about is your lifestyle, right? So do you travel a lot? Because if you travel a lot, the smaller dog you can get away with, the easier it's going to be because they just fit on airplanes better and they fit in buses better. And you can get a giant dog, you know, a Great Dane, if that's what you need for mobility work, you can still travel with a Great Dane. But if you don't need that size, then something smaller is going to be a lot easier to fit places when you go to travel, if that's something you do a lot. You also want to think about your ability or willingness to exercise your dog. So I saw on a post recently, um, somebody asked if a Dutch Shepherd would make a good diabetic alert dog. Well, kind of. I mean, they have excellent noses and they have excellent working ability, but... They are so high energy that unless you're going to run 10 miles every morning, then train the dog, then go run errands all day, and then babysit your kids at night, a Dutch Shepherd has way too much energy for you. Okay, they just do. So if you are a runner or a biker or you're very active and you need to bring your dog with you on those things, um, if your job has you up and moving a lot, if you run a lot of errands, then you're going to be able to handle a dog with more energy than if you just never really leave the house. So exercise is a huge thing to think about. I cannot tell you how many owners we have had come to us who bought a pointer or a husky or a German shepherd for service work and didn't realize how much exercise that dog needed. So your ability and interest in exercising your dog has got to be one of the things that you take into account very heavily when you're choosing a breed. And then grooming is another lifestyle thing you want to think about. So is anybody in your house allergic to dogs? That's something you'll need to consider. Um, are you interested in or willing to groom your own dogs? Or are you able and willing to pay a groomer to, to groom your dogs? So let's break that down a little bit, right? So um, something like a lab has that um, short double coated hair, right? It's very wash and wear. Um, it needs to be brushed to keep shedding down it, but it doesn't have to be trimmed. So that's a very low maintenance coat. They do shed. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Um, if you want something that does not shed, if allergies are a really big deal to you, a poodle is going to be your best bet. So there are a lot of doodles out there that make excellent service dogs. A lot of them have the good qualities of the lab and the good qualities of the poodle, you know, all that stuff. But a lot of them shed pretty heavily and some of them mat really badly. So doodles don't necessarily have good coat types. And so that's something that you'll want to talk to your breeder about and see if their line suits what you need. Now, having said all that, when it comes to allergies, any dog that is groomed every four to six weeks, meaning you took them to a groomer, they had a bath, they were blown out and they were washed, they're not going to shed very much. And that's going to help a lot with allergies. So grooming is definitely something that you want to consider. And you want to consider whether you have the money to pay somebody to groom the dog, whether you're willing to learn, whether, you know, you, you have to consider all that stuff because service dogs can't, they, they need to be well groomed out in public. And if allergies are a big deal, then that's something you really want to consider as well. So, you know, once you consider all of those things, there are a lot of reasons that labs, golden retrievers, and poodles are very 
re, you know, excuse me, very popular service dogs. And that's because they have the temperament to do the job. They're very adaptable um, to energy levels and exercise levels of their owners. They have good coat types. So labs, you know, like I said, they're very wash and wear. Um, poodles don't shed and mixes of these breeds. So that's why they're so popular. And that's why we recommend them a lot. In our program, we use a lot of poodles and Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers. And we use the tollers because they're quite a bit smaller than the goldens in the labs and that makes them easier to travel with. Um, but we will use, we use all kinds of breeds, but those are the ones that we lean towards the most because we have found them to work very well for people. Um, so there's a reason, like I said, that those breeds are so popular and so don't discount that. And another thing to think about too is that if you have an off breed, so if you have like a Dalmatian or a big Mastiff or something like that as a service dog, you're gonna get stopped more often um, because it's gonna draw a lot of attention in public. People are gonna wanna know if they can pet your Dalmatian and they didn't know Dalmatians could be service dogs and all that stuff. And in some areas of the country, you're gonna be more likely to be stopped as well and have public access issues with a dog that isn't a traditional service dog breed. Um, because everybody has this association in their, in their brain between labs and service work. And so that's just something to keep in mind as well is, is I know Dalmatians come up periodically and I love Dalmatians. I think they're really, really neat, but you are going to get stopped all the time because everybody is fascinated by Dalmatians. So that's again, just something to think about. So like I said, all of this stuff is very general. I'm speaking in general here and next week we'll get to, you know, evaluating individual dogs, but when you're choosing a breed, you've really got to think about your lifestyle. Okay, what it is you need the dog to do and your lifestyle, not just what type of dog you'd like to have. So like I said, check out the blog post because it has a lot more information in it and a lot more things to think about to help guide you on this decision. And then tune in next week because that's where we're going to start talking about how to evaluate an individual dog. And if you're going with a shelter dog, that's excellent. Loads of shelter dogs make really, really good service dogs. Um, next week is where we'll talk about how to evaluate an individual dog. And that's where, you know, if you're a, a shelter dog person, then that's the information that you need more so than breed because most of the dogs, at least in shelters around here, most of them are mixed breeds. So let us know if you guys have any questions and definitely check out that blog post. See you later.